You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. I'm Christy Landwehr. And I'm Sarah Honiger, and you are listening to the special monthly NRHA episode of Horses in the Morning on Horse Radio Network for this Thursday, November 14th. Good morning, horse world. It's the second Thursday of the month. That means it's time to slide in to the National Reigning Horse Association episode of Horses in the Morning. The NRHA Futurity and Adequan North American Affiliate Championships are from November 25th to December 7th in Oklahoma City. Join us today to hear some more about the events which make this so special to the reigning community. I am looking so forward to Futurity. It's the last one in the Norick Arena at the fairgrounds. And, you know, back in the day, and this is back in the day because I was a youth rider, mm -hmm. I rode in the Gateway of Champions. I... So it's like weird. <laughs> yes, I, I I have not ridden through it myself, but I know there's going to be a lot of emotions about it being the last one. You're totally right. Yes, it really is. I think they should take those old, super uncomfortable wooden seats and auction them off because I think they'd make some money. I think people would buy them just for the memory and have them in their house to say, hey, look, back in the day, I showed in this arena and won ABC Award because so many disciplines and so many breeds have their finals in that arena and have throughout all the years that it's been up. Yes. And it's actually funny you mentioned that because they totally are going to auction them. And I've heard. Oh, yay. Billy might not be happy that I'm making this public knowledge, but I do know that NRHA is getting some of those seats. And if you walk through the hallway, I mean, if you live in Oklahoma City, you've seen the new og Coliseum being built. It looks almost finished on the outside. I mean, it's so beautiful. And now in the hallway between the show offices and the main arena in the Norick, they have examples of the new chairs, which is so funny that you brought up those chairs this morning because you can practice sitting in what the new Coliseum will feel like. <laughs> okay, that'll be nice because they're going to be way more comfortable. <laughs> yes, and but you know, they don't have the decades of history built into them yet, but that will come. We'll get to build that, which is really exciting. It will. Well, I'm looking so forward to it. What are some exciting new things that are happening at the Futurity this year? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, for anyone listening, if you plan to come or, you know, you're just looking at kind of which days you should drive in or what have you, you should absolutely follow us on social and be checking nrhafaturity.com slash schedule because holy moly, things are being added all the time. We all keep joking internally that like sometimes we don't even know which way is up on days because we just added three new fun events for people. I mean, we have a reception at the governor's mansion that everyone can attend. We are potentially going to get to send off a Make-A-Wish Oklahoma recipient with a party. We're going to have parties that you can talk about, Christy, thanks to some of our corporate partners. We have the Platinum Performance Welcome Party, an international reception, a youth gathering. I mean, truly, that last week of the Futurity, there is a major fun event every single day. There is. So pretty much have Thanksgiving and when the turkey and the prime rib and whatever else you eat on Thanksgiving has settled, come and join us and spend that <laughs> next, that very first week of December with us. Yes. Yes. And if you don't have plans for Thanksgiving and you want to do it with us, you can come have Thanksgiving at the Raining Horse Foundation with us in Oklahoma City. <laughs> So many different things to do, and we are just looking so forward to all of it. So please come and join us. And this is kind of exciting. During the international reception on Wednesday the 4th, we have an inaugural futurity slide, and we also have a military slide. And we're going to be recognizing our veterans that day. We're all going to be wearing red. And, you know, because mm -hmm. this is Veterans Day week, I just thought we'd just kind of dive into that a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. We are partnering with the Two Ravens Foundation, and 
they have been using the Western way of life and horses to help veterans after they have served uh, kind of find, you know, whatever they're looking for. If it's a new kind of career path or maybe just some time with horses, we all know how great those are for our soul that Two Ravens Foundation has really set that as their goal to help out these veterans, which is absolutely incredible and near and dear to all of our hearts. And so they will get to compete. They are having a slide competition, which will be so much fun. And these veterans will have a few days to kind of get to know their horses and then compete in a huge shout out to Nathan Piper and his wife, Jean, and everything they've been doing to help get these horses, you know, I know they've, (laughs) their daughter is selling bracelets to help pay for some of the flights and things for these veterans and someone donated Airbnb. So the whole community is really excited about the military slide and the futurity slide and veterans and first responders do get in free that day along with a guest. So if you've always thought, man, what is the futurity? It's kind of a great time to come see it. Not only because we're celebrating veterans, but also if you think of, you know, a home run derby or those new, really exciting ways to showcase just one specific part of a sport, this is basically that same kind of concept. So you can come, be at our international reception, celebrate our veterans and watch beautiful horses do our signature reigning move, which is the slide. It's going to be awesome. And you know what? Speaking of that, I think today's show is going to be awesome. We're going to have Steve Ross on here in just a minute. And he has been a commentator for us and run our sports desk for years. We're going to dive more into futurity with him. And then we have Ashley Baller coming on from Teton Ridge to talk about really, really fun run guest program that we debuted at Derby. And now we're going to do it again here at Futurity. We can't wait to share more about that because all of you, whether you're at Futurity or not, can play the game for free. So that'll be fun to chat more about that with her. And then finally, at the end, we have uh, Ava Wellman coming on. And she was a fabulous winner in a runoff last year at our North American Affiliate Championships, which are, of course, are put on by Adequan and they are part of our futurity. So we're just so excited about the show today. It'll be a good one. It will. And before we kick off into looking ahead at the future and how excited we are for all this, I just want to mention briefly that although we are so excited this week, it's also been such a hard week for so many folks in our community. We lost a really great, incredible horseman, incredible person, Bob Avila, earlier this week. I know so many of our horsemen and horsewomen in our industry got their start because of him. He has been such a mentor, such an inspiration. He's a past maturity winner. I had the honor and privilege of getting to work with him when he was on the professionals committee And we would just be so remiss to not mention this huge, huge loss in our community. And we are just thinking of Dana and all those who loved him. And, you know, we're looking ahead, but definitely honoring him moving forward. I know everyone is at the AQHA World Show right now, and I know we will continue to do that at the Futurity this year. Steve Ross is an NRHA professional, commentator, host of the NRHA Sports Desk, a retired NRHA judge who now serves on the teaching panel. He has an eclectic background traveling the world as a clinician and a coach and sharing his message of solid horsemanship with a low-key approach that has consistently proven to produce outstanding results. In addition to judging, coaching, and training, Steve is also an experienced radio and broadcasting personality and can often be seen interviewing competitors and commentating from the largest competitions in the world, including our NRHA Derby and Futurity. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. For those who aren't in our media room at our events, Steve is just the highlight, bright, shining spark of every day. And he comes in saying that. And so we're happy to start the podcast this morning with a big old hi, Steve. (laughs) Yes, we are. It's so great to be on here. (laughs) I love working with everybody in that media office at the major events. And I'm just so excited about what we have coming up. Well, what we have coming up is the NRHA Futurity and Adequan North American Affiliate Championships here in Oklahoma City. It's just a couple weeks away. And Steve, for those listening that might not have been, what is it that you think makes this such a unique event? It's two Super Bowls at the same time. You have in the Adequan Arena... I love that the NRHA has created such a venue for, you know, lack of a better term, let's call it what it is, the weekend warriors. People like my mm-hmm. wife, Lucinda, that goes and 
throws her little mare on the weekends and chases a world title or a North American affiliate championship. And to see what those people do over there in that arena is really special because you see not the household names, not the Fapanis and the Flair does, mm-hmm. but you see people's reigning horse dream coming true for them. For some of them, it's just to be there. For some of them, it's winning that world title. But it's just a special event. And then on the other side in the Norick Arena, you just have the best of the best. And it just, the futurity shows you every year how these incredible horses and riders are able to raise the bar. So from however you want to approach this sport, it's like I said, it's like two Super Bowls. So Steve, what is the purpose? Because you do this for us. And what has been the effect, in your opinion, of the NRHA Sports Desk, which is being presented by Teton Ridge? The NRHA Sports Desk, I am so grateful to Cheryl Cody for coming up with the concept and Teton Ridge for embracing it because there's very little I've done in the media that's received the positive feedback that the Sports Desk has. And I think it's because for that two weeks of the futurity, 10 days of the Derby, twice a day, we can take people from all around the globe and walk them through the events of the day. I love that we show highlights from the Attaquan Arena, and we're able to get reactions Mm -hmm. from the riders and the youth winners. And the same thing in the open arena, we're able to show the best runs of the day during the go-round. It's very much a sports center type update where you see highlights and you see leaderboards, and we can really keep people up to speed. And one of the biggest positive comments I get is that people feel like by the finals, they really know what to expect because we've been able to set the table all week with them. It's been one of the greatest communication tools as an industry that we've ever been handed. And I just feel the responsibility of making sure I deliver. Well, and you certainly do. I mean, it's so fun to watch every week. It's so fun to get to collaborate on such a special project. And it's so fun to see those comments, like you said, come in from all over the world. I mean, we've seen such a renewed interest in the sport, such a new spark. There are so many people who truly might not know anything about horses that are now so invested in reigning. What do you think has led to this, Steve? There are a number of factors that have uh, kind of led to the rise of reigning and I think horse sports in general. The one I always talk about whenever I'm on a podcast is the Taylor Sheridan effect. If we'd hired Madison Avenue to promote our sport, our lifestyle, this is exactly how they've done it through docu-series like The Last Cowboy, through bringing NRHA superstars onto the most popular show on television and Yellowstone. And it just showed people, maybe that aren't even going to go compete, but hey, this is a viable hobby. Horse sports are a way that you can capture that bit of the Western lifestyle get outside, you know, everything that's good about horses. And obviously for us as as an industry, it's been a boon in terms of interest, number of competitors, just so many things, you you know, and that's before I even start talking about Teton Ridge, who I kind of lump into that because I think they're just as responsible with what they've done with the American performance horsemen, how they've gotten behind and formed teams of great riders, And all this exposure that just was gifted to us as an industry has just led to a renewed enthusiasm and education about our sport. And I love it. I love it, too. I love being a part of it. It's so much energy right now. And, you know, you've been at the Futurity a long time. So do you have a favorite tradition that takes place at that event? Wow. So many. You know, I I guess it's the Thanksgiving dinner because I realize, realize I've had way more Thanksgiving dinners with my NRHA family than I have my actual family. And that's not (laughs) sad because we always get together after I get home. But my Thanksgiving since the 1980s has been spent in Oklahoma City. You know, that's changed from when the Biltmore was the happening place to be. to (laughs) You know, now we have a beautiful spread put on by the Sports Foundation down in the sale ring. And, you know, you just get to float from table to table and see groups of people that have been a part of your life and say hi. And it's almost like everybody checks the horse show at the door at that Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, one of the reasons I say that Futurity is kind of like our convention or class reunion. Like it's where we all reunite every year. And that's my favorite part of it. I love that you said that, Steve. And reflecting on you saying that this event is two Super Bowls in one. 
it just has me thinking what other sport in the world could someone say that they go and have Thanksgiving dinner with like what their favorite NFL players. I mean, that's unheard of. It really is. (laughs) It's so awesome. Well, Steve, as you know, this is the last fraternity in the Jim Norick arena, which is crazy to say out loud. We know you've seen so many changes in the sport since the beginning. Can you kind of reflect on some of that? I think the game really changed at the time it moved to Oklahoma City. Maybe even go back a year to Craig Johnson on Sparkles Rosanna, which was the most beautiful winning futurity run, the most beautiful mare. Juice Palomino, Craig was so in his prime, and that mare just delivered. And it kind of moved our sport forward in a way. And then we get to Oklahoma City. Bob Loomis wins it on Sophie Oak, an electrifying run. You go on to the Boomernick, and then what I call the Bob Avila era, where the West Coast influence became so predominant. And then 10 years after that, you saw both those kind of Horse training cultures just be combined into what we have now, which is really a level of excellence. You won't see anything else. One of the things I talk about with judges as a former judge is it's so fun to judge this event now because you realize there are so many talented horses that are capable of winning this and so many talented riders that are too. Now, obviously, some have an advantage in experience. But I just like seeing where the sport has come, how it has grown as a whole, how our horse training, our breeding, everything has improved from back in those early days. And I'm really going to miss the Jim Norick. I mean, I've got the, the most of the great horse show memories of my life have occurred in that building. I completely agree with you. We were talking about that right before you came on today during our chat, Sarah and I were, and we completely agree. I think people will enjoy the new Coliseum. It'll be great. But boy, the memories in the Norick, they go on and on and on. So for some people, though, this might be their very first time ever coming to the Futurity, whether they're coming as a fan or coming as a competitor. What are some things that you think that they should see while they're in Oklahoma City if it's their first time? Well, there's so much to see at the Futurity, but if you get bored with the shopping and watching the great horses, I love the Western Heritage Museum up by uh, Remington Park. I've spent hours in there. It's kind of a tradition of mine, if I'll have a slow day, to go out there and just see the Western art, the Western culture reflected there. They'll have Hackamore and Bit collections on loan from great collectors. And if you really want to get a sense for Oklahoma, you owe it to yourself to go there. I am hope I'm giving the name right, but that's a great experience. I love that. If you're a little younger and like to have fun, Bricktown is awesome. you got to give Oklahoma City credit for making that sports, entertainment, and restaurant hub. And it's a great place to go and people watch <laughs> and just hang out for the night. It sure is. And Steve, I love that you mentioned the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. We actually have a booth there today. They have an awesome event for young people, middle school, high school, all ages that are interested in STEM. And they transform the whole thing to have all these booths. And Courtney Dehoff is speaking. And so Micah is there today talking to those kids and teaching them about reining. And you're right. They're just so incredible and do so much with us. So I'm so glad you mentioned them. Yeah, that's an awesome experience. And I would encourage anybody, you're like, well, Steve, I'm a cowboy. I'm not a museum guy. <laughs> like, I'm not a museum guy either till I go to one. <laughs> You'll be drawn in, I promise you. There's so many different exhibits that if you have this affinity for the Western lifestyle or you wouldn't be at our, our futurity, go out there. Like, it's worth it. Absolutely. Well, we've talked a lot about the advances of you know, our whole industry. And one of those is certainly the live finals that people can watch on our live stream online, no matter where you are in the world for free. It's a great feature of our event. And then during the finals now, we also have the commentating. So how did this kind of come about? Because I really do think it revolutionized so much of the industry for folks all over the world to really be part of this, even if they're unable to join us in Oklahoma City. You know, it's a great addition, I feel like, and I feel so privileged that since we started doing commentary at the NRHA Futurity, I've kind of been the guy. I've had some partners off and on over the years, but I've been on every one of them for the last 20-some-odd years. I can't even remember when we started with this, 
But it has been the greatest tool to bridge the gap between the public and hasn't hurt our attendance. If you look at the last couple of majors events, we, major events we've had, but it's an opportunity for me as a broadcaster to point out some things that the public may not see or know and take them a little bit inside the huddle. And the feedback I normally get is people enjoy that the most. You know, they like hearing a little bit of backstory. They like the nuanced explanation of the judging, which we try to do, along with remembering that some people are just seeing our sport for the first time. But I also feel like if they found the NRHA website and they're watching the futurity, they already have a working knowledge. So I try not to dumb it down too much, but just being able to conversationally expose what our sport is doing and the direction it's going. It's been a great communication tool and it's been great outreach for the association. When you look at how many different countries are watching in the finals, I I don't like to look at it anymore because I start to get nervous. (laughs) You getting nervous after all these years. I love that, Steve. That's awesome. That's what makes you so good, right? You turn that nervous energy into enthusiasm when you speak. You're so good. So we so appreciated having you on the show today. For folks that want to find out more about you, what website or social media is the best way to find out? I have a website, steverossraininghorses.com. We also have a Facebook page, Steve Ross Reining and Performance Horses. You can go on there and see all our horses for sale and meet my wife and my staff and everybody that works here and see all our pretty horses. And phone numbers and email addresses are all on there, so feel free to reach out. Well, Steve, thank you again so much for being on the show. And gosh, in just a couple of short weeks, we'll be able to say, hi, Steve. I know. I can't wait. I'm already taking my (laughs) immune boosters. (laughs) and uh, getting my sports coat dry cleaned. Well, it was so much fun hearing from Steve. He is just like a walking encyclopedia in history of reigning, and it just never gets old. It does not. And I really want to go back to what you said. How many people can have Thanksgiving dinner with their sports heroes like we do at the reigning competition, right? (laughs) That is just, and I love that that's his favorite part of it, is having those dinners and that camaraderie. I love that. It's so true. And I just think about it all the time. I mean, who can call an NR, uh, not NRHA, that's what we are, <laughs> who can call an <laughs> NFL player that's in the Hall of Fame and be like, hey, can you help me? I just want to be a quarterback and I would just love some tips. And that's what they get to do in our industry. And it's, it just is so cool to me. Well, as we, you know, talk about history and talk about where this event has been and where this industry has been, now we get to talk to Ashley Baller, who's doing incredible things to help it grow even further. Ashley Baller is the Senior Project Engagement Manager at Teton Ridge Gaming. In this capacity, she serves the industry by working to provide fan engagement and interactive opportunities through the official fantasy game of the National Finals Rodeo, Pro Fantasy Rodeo, and Inside Rodeo, a gaming suite dedicated to enhancing the rodeo experience for every type of fan. In addition, she helps to plan and produce Rodeo Vegas, the premier after party of the NFR. Ashley was also the former manager of multilingual resources and communications at the American Quarter Horse Association and Miss Rodeo Colorado in 2022. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. So excited that, you know, you're from my state. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, I think that's pretty cool. And I was kind of (laughs) there for all that and saw all that happen. I just, I'm just really, really proud of all that. That's so, you're awesome. That's all I got to say about all that. Hey, thank you. Likewise, us Mountain State sisters, we, we got to represent, but I'm always admiring amazing women in the equine industry who are out there paving the way for women like myself to achieve our dreams. So thank you for all you do. Well, and Ashley, tell us a little bit about your upbringing and your involvement in horses. Of course. Well, I'm a first generation cowgirl, but the horse bug bit me at a young age. I was in 4-H and grew up showing all around and decided to take it extra far by graduating from Colorado State University with a degree in equine science and minors in business and Spanish. So I just, you know, I love those horses so much. I decided I might as well make a career out of this. So while I was at Colorado State University, I was on the American Quarter Horse judging team and was also in the Legends of Ranching cold starting program. 
And after I graduated in 2018, I found myself in AQHA International, as you mentioned, the Manager of Multilingual Resources and Communication. And oh my gosh, what an amazing experience that was, uniting people throughout the world through the love of the horse. So I traveled to Italy, Germany, Mexico to um, register horses, and then, of course, help to develop a wide variety of multilingual resources for people to engage with the horse abroad. After that, I was Miss Radio Colorado 2022, traveled 40,000 miles throughout the state and nation promoting the sport, and again, I thought, you know what? I just, I need more of this. I cannot stop rodeoing. So that leads me to where I am now at Teton Ridge Gaming. And oh my gosh, it is always busy here. But again, it's all for the love of this Western industry and rodeo. Well, Ashley, that is so awesome. And we love that you're with Teton Ridge now. And we are so proud to have them as a corporate partner here at NRHA. Can you tell listeners who might not know about Teton Ridge or kind of know what they stand for a little bit more about the organization? I would love to. Teton Ridge has come about, gosh, within the last five years or so. And I really, really admire what we're doing here. And it's really, it's a fun opportunity to be able to spread the word and educate others about what is Teton Ridge. So we are a house of brands with some of the brands that we all know very familiar familiarly and very well. We hold them near and dear to our heart. But to wrap it all up, it's a Western sports media and entertainment brand. So just to name of it, just to name a few of the brands within our house here, we have Cowboys and Indians, American Rodeo, Pro Fantasy Rodeo, of course, Rodeo Vegas, Better Barrel Races, Higher Boots, Arizona Ridge Riders, TR9 Ranch and Breeding and Training Facility, and even more than that. So that's what I love about Teton Ridge is that it's made it possible for all of these homegrown brands that we all love to link arms and figure out ways to continue to elevate our Western industry and provide more opportunities for people to engage. I love the gaming side of Teton Ridge. I think it's so exciting and I love how it started in rodeo, but then it kind of moved on to just kind of horse shows in general when you started doing ride guests. And of course, that's when we jumped on, you know, at Derby this past year and did that program for our open finals. And now, of course, it's called Run Guests because we do runs and we'll be doing that this year at Futurity for non-pro and open finals. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the gaming side of Teton Ridge came to be? Absolutely. And as a fellow performance horse fan myself, I am so excited to get into Run Guest. But I'll tell you what, it is so fun to learn about how gaming came about. So Gail and Casey Jones, over 20 years ago now, created these brands. And it started, you know, back before we had computers. So Pro Fantasy Rodeo kicked things off and people would submit, they write on a piece of paper, mail it in with a check and enter just like that. Of course, now we have profantasyrodeo.com where thousands of people play throughout the year on a variety of different games. We're getting ready for NFR Fantasy right now. But Casey and Gil are really passionate about making sure that the rodeo and Western industries as a whole have a strong future. So they decided what better way than to provide opportunities for people to interact and learn and all through the game, the love of the game. So there's pro fantasy rodeo, which is kind of like fantasy football, but for rodeo. But my favorite is the inside rodeo gaming suite. And this is really new. It started with rodeo guests where people guess the time or the score. But since then, we have expanded into the performance horse realm, which I especially love, including run guests. So the point of gaming really is to make sure that we are inviting more fans in, whether it's your first time playing or you've been a vetted fan for 20 plus years. We want you to feel comfortable and have some fun so that you're hooked from then on out. Well, it's so true that people get hooked. As you and Christy mentioned, we had ride guests for the first time at our Derby. This is powered, of course, by Spook Scott Wiz and Michelle Ann Kimball. And we now are having run guests at the Futurity. We will have it on non-pro and open finals. And at the Derby, it kind of broke records for a single night of gaming. There were more than 500 people playing from all over the world, which was so much fun. 
Ashley, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about this game and this free game for everyone to play no matter where they are in the world? Most definitely. And you're right. It was a phenomenal turnout. I was exceptionally pleased to see the amount of engagement engagement that we had for that night. And it's true. It just goes to show that reigning fans, they show up and they show out and they want to be able to play, whether they are in the arena or out of it. And that's the point. We want people to feel the excitement as if you're the one making the spins and doing the run downs and the everything. So run guess. Yes, we will have that at the futurity and it's free. That's the best part of it all. You know, with this day and age with all of the technology and different advertisements, I, I feel like I always find myself with, well, where's the catch? Like, are you serious? I can actually have fun for free. And there is no catch with run guests. So people just go to nrha.com forward slash run guests. And what well, all they have to do is guess the score for each run. Easy as that. So they can play along if they want, or let's say it's their very first time learning about raining. They can actually go to the quick pick section and we will assign scores for you. Now, let's say you're feeling a little bit confident. You've seen five runs go down. You want to take a shot at it yourself. You can edit those scores right there in the app and have some fun. And I know I say app, but it's actually a web browser game. So no downloading necessary. You just go into your web browser, type in the URL, and you're just about entered. And what's so exciting is our corporate partners have really showed up to support this. This year we have Shorty's Cowboy Hattery is doing a premium hat box. We have Anderson Bean Boots. We have Platinum Performance and Cinch Gift Certificates at Surprises. So you're playing for free and you get to win cool stuff. So there's nothing better than that. So Ashley, is there anything else that you would like to add today about the game or Teton Ridge? I just would encourage everybody to get in the game. Do not miss out on an experience to judge from the comfort of your own home even. Where are, wherever you are, whether you're in the United States or throughout the globe, it's new, it's fun, it's easy to play, and these prizes are just phenomenal. So do not miss out. Make sure you head to nrha.com forward slash run guest and get in the action this December because it's going to be a blast and you'll be wanting some more of it after that. Thank you all for having me. So Ashley and I have known each other for a little while as fellow Coloradans and I kind of saw her go through her journey with AQHA and then run for Miss Rodeo Colorado here in our state. And also, of course, my son goes to Colorado State University. So there's many ties there and I just love seeing how our industry, you can go so many different directions if you want to work in it. So for those that are listening right now and kind of thinking about that, really, really um, know that you can reach out to a lot of us and have conversations. And that would include our upcoming guest, too, who very much is launching her journey at coming straight out of high school. Well, I love that you mentioned getting to see Ashley's journey through this whole industry. I feel so similarly about our next guest, Miss Ava Wellman. She has come up through being a short stirrup and now is going to be starting her journey as a collegiate athlete. And I'm just so proud of her both in and outside of the show pen. And I'm so glad everyone gets to hear from Miss Ava Wellman. I'm so excited to introduce Ava Wellman, who is a 19-year-old National Reigning Horse Youth Association member who lives in River Falls, Wisconsin, where her dad, Brian Wellman, is an NRHA professional. Since 2019, Ava has held leadership roles and is currently the NRHYA secretary and treasurer. Not only is she successful outside the show pen, but inside as she has more than $15,000 in NRHA lifetime earnings and was the 2023 Adequan North American Affiliate Championship Youth 1418 Champion. Ava, how's it going? Good. How are you guys? We're good. We're so happy to have you. Ava has been such a great leader in NRHYA, and how she started in it is really quite funny. We had a NRHA employee who went to a show and saw what a great leader she was and told me about it. And so her first officer position actually occurred because I cold called her as she was, I think you had the flu <laughs> yep. and so I get this really gargly answer on the phone and I beg her to run for an officer and then fast forward to the first time picking her up in an airport. She actually was an unaccompanied minor and we had never met. 
And so I will never forget the airport employee and her. And she says, well, I think this person has red hair and I think I'm meeting her in the airport and this employee just dropping her off with me (laughs) here in Oklahoma (laughs) City. (laughs) Oh, yes. And here we are years later, Ava. Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I still wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> Neither would I. And Ava, so last year when you won this huge title at the NAAC in the 14 to 18, it was after a runoff and it was such a long day of showing. I'll never forget it. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about what that was like for you? It was a really exciting experience. It was one of those things where you're like, holy smokes, I couldn't have had like a better timing to tie someone for a runoff because I don't remember if it was like we were either back to back or he was like there's one horse in between us and then we were like in the middle of the pack so we had to sit there and wait all day long and we're like okay how is this gonna end up how's it gonna play out so it was just like a really long waiting game but in the end it was really exciting I actually went into the runoff in the warm-up pen you can't hear what the other people were scoring so I went into the runoff I was the second horse in and I had no clue at all what he had just previously marked so I was like okay we're just going to go in here and do our best and see what happens that might be for the best then there's no stress either way right you're just doing your best you can I don't know I think that might be better honestly not knowing I think that's great well yeah go ahead oh I was gonna say yeah I think that really helped me too because I just didn't get in my head and I was like okay we're just gonna Go show what I got. And here we are. (laughs) Well, do a favor to our listeners. Tell us a little bit about your history and competing in these classes. And then tell us about your horses. We want to know all about them. Okay. Well, so I started showing in the short stirrup, actually, when I was four years old, a mare named Sailing in the Wind. She's actually the mare that taught all three of us girls because I have an older and younger sister she was the first horse all of us showed and she's just like one of those horses that we hold really near and dear to our hearts and I started out showing her and then I went on and had a few different horses in between some of them we leased from different clients and I had a ton of success there I also went on and I showed the Arabian Rainers as well I showed those for quite a few years with Crystal McNutt and my dad as well and was really successful in their show pen, and I had a lot of fun there, and then I went back to the Rainer scene and got out of the Arabs, and here I am. I've been showing in the rookie and non-pro stuff on top of also showing in the youth classes, so that was really exciting. And then this past year in 2023 at the Derby, I actually bought the horse that I showed to win the NAAC 14 to 18 on. His name is Nick Spangled. His barn name is Mac. And he's just one of the, like, one of the coolest horses I've ever had the opportunity to show. He's so fun. He's just one of those horses where everything's just so natural for him. He's so, it looks like he just floats across the pen. He's so fun to show. And he just has a really fun personality and stuff. So I've been really fortunate to get to show him. And this year I've had a ton of success with him also. He's just one of those horses that opened a lot of doors for me that I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Like he made my first, I showed in my very first like derby down in Oklahoma City this year. And we made it back into the youth finals at the derby. And so that was really exciting. And then he won me a saddle this year also for our North Central Riding Horse Association for the youth. And I think I'm sitting like third in the world standings, which is something that I've never been able to do. I've never even made top 10. So that was really exciting. So it's just a lot of firsts that he's brought me and I'm really grateful for all of them. I love that so much. Your journey together has been really, really awesome. And Ava, your dad, like I mentioned, Brian, he's an NRHA professional and you've always been involved in youth leadership. And so you've kind of seen these NAAC classes really grow over the years. And so why do you think that these classes are so important for just the industry as a whole, being involved in it kind of from different angles within your family? Oh, I think it's such an important part 
to keep our industry growing and moving forward because these youth kids are really the future of our association and without them we have no future so really prioritizing and making sure that like we're getting the youth involved as much as we can and I know you Sarah have done an amazing job getting more youth involved on like the leadership side from my first year that you had to cold call people to just run for the board (laughs) to last year where we had I can't even tell you how many applicants trying to run for the board so it's been really exciting and our youth has grown so much just from so many different angles and I think it's looking really bright for our future for sure. So Ava, this is your last year in the NRHYA and you have always held leadership roles. So go ahead and tell us what this journey has meant to you and what's going to happen next for you. Yeah, holding these leadership positions has been really exciting and it's brought me so many different opportunities that I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way I'd ever do that to like when we just this past summer we were in Washington DC and we got to go sit down with the individual writing doing the markup for the farm bill and crazy stuff like that and we were in the Lincoln room where Abraham Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg address and just different stuff like that that you're like there's no way in my normal life would I be ever (laughs) able to do that and here I am so it was there's just a lot of really cool experiences that I highly recommend to everyone. Every youth kid that came through and ridden with my dad and stuff, I'm like, you guys got to, like, let's get you involved. Let's see how, like, what can we do to get you involved? Because there's so many opportunities that NRHYA has opened up for me. And I'm like, I want to share that with other people because it's experiences I wouldn't trade anything for. And there's also so many opportunities I know in the women's sports side going on like this next year, I'm going to be going on and going to Oklahoma state to go ride for their equestrian team. So there's a lot of different opportunities beyond just NRHA that are available when you're involved. It's so true, Ava. And we're so excited to get to cheer you on as you continue to ride for OSU And, you know, not that I'm biased or anything, but I have to say, go Pokes. It's just, (laughs) it's just too ingrained in me not to. (laughs) But Ava, there had no leeway in that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. First Olivia, now you, they're going to start catching on. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Ava, it's been so much fun to just get to see your journey in and out of the show pen. And we're so proud of you. And just thank you so much for joining us today to talk about the NAAC. And we will see you in Oklahoma City in a couple of weeks. Awesome. I can't wait. Thank you, guys. I was so excited to have Ava on to kind of show a little bit about what goes on not only at our NRHA Futurity, but also at our Adequan North American Affiliate Championships and the other pen. I mean, it really is, like Steve said, two Super Bowls at once. We have the two different... Horse show arena is going on simultaneously with people from all walks of life, all ages of horses, all kinds of things. And Ava was definitely a wonderful representation of what that pen and the enthusiasm in that pen is all about. Absolutely. And you mentioned enthusiasm in the pen. I mean, anyone coming to the fraternity, you have to go over to that NAC out of Quan Arena. The stands literally will be vibrating with people screaming and jumping and, you know, our rookie of the year competition is over there. The youth prime time for our older riders and master's classes for that same demographic people who have just started riding. I mean, it's really the whole gamut. And I think it's really cool to be able to watch an arena of people and be able to find yourself in someone showing there. And that's absolutely true for that Adequan NAAC arena. I agree. So Sarah, one more time, go ahead and let people know how do they find the Futurity schedule so they can come and enjoy the event with us? Absolutely. So it's nrhafuturity.com for all event information or nrhafuturity.com slash schedule. If you already know you're coming to join us and you just need to figure out which days. And I would absolutely encourage everyone to follow us on social media. We'll be highlighting the different events, providing timely updates, And in the meantime, if you're thinking, oh, I really want to learn more about reigning before then, be sure to check out our previous podcasts on nrha.com slash podcast. And until then, we hope that you go out and have the slide of your life. 